Greetings everybody, this is the video brief for Sunday's mission yesterday on our Syria cruise. This is uh, for all of the AWG members that weren't able to make it yesterday and for those of you following uh, following on the channel. So, let's get started. Alright, so I guess I should say right up front that this briefing is for DCS World gameplay only. Uh, its classification level is bottom secret. Today we're going to cover the threat political situation in the region, the mission purpose, the procedure we're going to follow today, some of the training variables that we're going to talk about uh, in the mission and do, execute, and we'll always cover our contingencies or emergency procedures and such. So the threat is we have seen for the last week uh, maritime bomber activity out of Syria. It looks like it's a Chinese uh, Xian H6J so far, the two or three times that we've gone out to meet it, to uh, escort it through its uh, track, it has been unarmed, nothing on the uh, wings. It's got a couple sensor pods on it. Looks like they've got it set up for reconnaissance. So for those of you that are new to the H6J, uh, it's basically a modified H6K for, the use, uh, for China's use, and it's uh, designed to replace the H6G and this has a, a greater payload with a long, uh, longer range and better performance, uh, similar to that of the H6K Kilo. So here's the regional situation is we've got uh, somewhere out of Syria these bombers are launching. We've seen two different bombers, only one at a time at different, on mission, different mission flights. And uh, they seem to be coming out of one of these airfields. But one thing that is consistent, they've been following a, a dedicated plan each time. Uh, of an air corridor down this way in international waters just going down. We don't know if they're listening, if they're doing signet, signals intelligence, or if they're doing any type of reconnaissance. Uh, I don't think they're close to anything to get any picture. Uh, they may have some synthetic aperture radars. There is a dome underneath that we are uh, pretty sure that is like a ground radar dome that they can see downward with, but we don't know if they have any side scan capabilities right now. Uh, one of the things that we have coordinated with is our allies in the south down in Jordan and Israel have been sending up flights to meet and greet uh, the bomber as they come by there, as the, the, the reconnaissance aircraft as they come by there. And then uh, in the middle, uh, the Lebanese are pretty much neutral on this. They haven't really fielded any, any type of response to it and everything like that. So far, their airspace, airspace hasn't been overflowed overflown by anybody, so I think they're pretty happy. And then up in the north, which we're part of, uh, up in this northern region up here, is the uh, the Turks are maintaining a good presence with their F-16s out of Inserlik, uh, and we're also getting some tanker support from USAFE out of Inserlik today too, which we'll cover in the briefing a little bit further. Our area responsibility, the Air Warfare Group, all 12 of us are uh, primarily, our, our three sections are going to set up what we call the wall. And the wall is three different separate uh, cap tracks or bar cap traps tracks that we are going to set up so that we can basically can maintain a wall coverage. And we've got a special training objective that we're going to do in that today. So the procedure we're going to follow is, or the procedural uh, organization that we're going to follow is uh, Devil is going to cap north. They're going to take off first, and they're going to basically uh, leave from the boat, head direct to waypoint two. Once they get to waypoint two, they're going to climb to 20,000 feet, head up to waypoint three, where they'll enter their track box area. Uh, and until relieved, uh, they'll set a joker at 6.5, and until relieved, they'll rely on shell for air refueling support and any emergency air refueling needs. And uh, once relieved and once... Uh, once we're cleared off of our vault time, we're going to head back uh, to waypoint 6 off Akutari, and then waypoint 7 is down where we re-enter the marshal or do the straight-in overhead depending on fuel. Uh, contingencies in route on the recovery, we have uh, diverts at Papos, Akutari, and then we also have a KC-130 at 15,000 feet, Royal Air Force uh, C-130 orbiting south of Akutari over the ocean. And then, of course, we do have our uh, our S three B S three B tanker uh, recovery tanker at six thousand feet in the pattern over Mothers. Roman's got a similar picture. They're going to be doing the central cap, though. They're going to depart out about ten minutes after Devil flight. 
they're going to direct to waypoint. Their waypoint 2 is over Akateri. Then they're going to meet where also co-located Bullseye is at waypoint 3. Everybody has waypoint 3 as the Bullseye in this mission except for, uh, except for Squid, which we'll talk about later. Roman's uh, box, uh, cap box is going to be right here. They're going to be uh, basically protecting the central part of the wall. Uh, their joker is going to be set at six, and when once they're cleared off uh, off station, they're going to recover from waypoint six direct to the marshal stack, uh, back right to the marshal waypoint to set up for others. Again, uh, any air refueling needs are going to be satisfied by the KC-130 at 15,000, and then of course, if they have uh, needs in the in the pattern, the uh, S-3B is going to refuel them out of, out of others. So Squid is probably got the easiest job today, but they're also going to be up the longest. They're going to take off 10 minutes after Roman. They're going to take the south cap. They're going to go direct to Akoteri. Then they're going to proceed out to their point south of Roman's track. And then their track box is going to be in this area right here to maintain their part of the wall. Again, we've got the northern part of the wall overlaps with the Turks, and the southern part of the wall overlaps with the Israelis and the Jordanians. So we've got good containment in this area. Remember, our uh, our main objective on this is to protect the island of Cyprus and the carrier strike group. So Joker 5.5 for Squid, and so they'll be up the longest. They'll probably uh, end up taking off late, hit the tanker more times, and then recover back with us uh, just, just shortly, maybe 10, 15 minutes after everybody else recovers. Their uh, air refueling tanker en route is going to be the KC-130 also, or relief tanker that comes off Akaturi, and then once they're cleared off their station, they're going to come down uh, to the recovery waypoint, down at waypoint 7, uh, and they have the recovery tanker as well down uh, off of Mothers. Some of the variable training we're going to do, and this is the specialized training that we're going to focus on today. So I want you guys to think about your waypoints for the cap track as the start waypoint, in the turnaround waypoint, and then you go back to the start waypoint, you're going to recycle those waypoints. For most of us, it's going to be waypoints 3, 4, and 5 are going to be recycled uh, back and forth. And so we're just, for our purposes, so everybody's talking the same sheet, we're going to talk about waypoint X and waypoint Y. Waypoint X is going to be the start where the division enters the initial waypoint, starts the track as a four ship. Uh, once they reach the midpoint, lead's going to push off three and four to reverse track, and one section's going to go back to where they came from, from the initial waypoint. The other section's going to continue on. And then, basically, both sections are going to fly contracts so that they get to the turnaround points about the same time. The benefits of this is better rear coverage. The aircraft that is flying towards the center can see beyond the aircraft that's coming at them and can cover the rear aspect of the section that's over there and the same vice versa. The section that's going the opposite direction can look look beyond the section that's coming at them to, uh, flying the other side of the track and cover their rear quarter. What this does is it also allows for better airspace coverage. If we have somebody trying to penetrate the airspace, instead of having everybody down at one end of the racetrack, we may have we have guys equally spread out where they would overlap in the middle of the racetrack, but they would pretty much be able to cover the whole racetrack and we'd have at least a section that can go out and do an immediate response while other, everybody else scrambles to back them up. And I mentioned the quicker response. Uh, it allows us to basically uh, maximize our coverage of the space without being too spread out, especially since we're going to have a wall that's going to be probably around 100, 180, 100, 200 miles long. Contingencies, as always, uh, we've got the tankers are brief. They're in your kneeboard. The frequencies are in the presets. And your divert airfields are also in there, too. You've got your tower freaks. Uh, all your runway information is in there. Be sure to review that in your individual briefs. Uh, SOPs, remember, nobody diverts alone. If somebody has to divert for any reason, we send it as a two-ship. Uh, and if two, two ship, another two-ship has to go, then it's going to be a four-ship divert. So we've had to do that in a couple of weather situations. Uh, but you guys, know the, you guys know the drill. Most importantly, keep ahead of their jet. Stay ahead of the mission. Get, you know, be, be ready to go to the next waypoint. Be ready to push to the next frequency and fly the brief. That's all I've got. Everybody stay safe. If you have any questions for those watching or following this, uh, the series, go ahead and drop them in the comment section below and one of us will be sure to answer you. Appreciate you guys watching and everybody have a great day.